Hey there, students. So uh, this is at least take five of our math lesson. <laughs> We've been trying to teach them, but this one's the one. We're going to do this. So we're talking about elapsed time today. And elapsed time just means that we're figuring out the amount of time that there is between two points. So between when we begin recess and we end recess, that is uh, elapsed time. So I have a special guest, Mrs. Healy, who's going to teach us. She's a pro with time. She's been using time her whole life. <laughs> Uh, and Tammy is videoing for us, which is excellent. So she will hello. hello. So I have a question I'm going to have. I'm going to read through this question right here. And then we're both going to share a little bit about ways that we can think about figuring out elapsed time. Okay. So the question is, Dora and her brother Kyle spent one hour and 35 minutes doing yard work. Then they stopped for lunch at 1.20 p.m. At what time did they start doing yard work? Um, so, Mrs. Healy, I will kick it over to you yeah. if you want to okay, so, talk a little bit. So, right when he read that, my mind started thinking, what does that mean? And and I had already drawn a couple clocks here, so I'm thinking, if they stopped at 120, I'm going to make this my stopping clock. So, I'm going to draw 120 for you. So, there's one, and then I'll just point to 20. So, that's when they stopped, <clears throat> but it took them time to do it. So I want to figure out, so I know it took them an hour and 35, so what I'm going to be thinking of as we do this is it took them an hour and 15 minutes. So if I move this clock backwards, 5, 10, 15, well I can actually move it a whole hour backwards. That would be not one, but this would also move this way, right? So then if I just go back an hour, I'm gonna draw it in red, then it would be 12, because that moved an hour, 20. Okay, so now I'm at 12, 20. So she <laughs> just counted was, back one yeah. full hour, just one so, full hour first. Yeah, so I just moved it back an hour, so then now I'm at 12, 20, but now I have to go 35 more minutes, so I'm just gonna count in my head, 35 more would be five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 minutes. So then that, that hand then just moved all the way to there. So in my mind, that's an hour and 35 minutes, which puts me at, because it's not 12 anymore, it's gonna be almost 12. So that's gonna make it 11, 45. That's how I would think about it. Okay, Mr. Downs, so, how would you do if it? If you're great with clocks and you can visualize those hands, the big hand, the little hand moving your head, then this might be a great option for you and you can draw out the clock and, and do the hops the way that Mrs. Healy did it. I'm going to show you another way where we're going to make basically a timeline and where we are starting at 120 and we're going an hour and 35 minutes back in time. I'm going to show you how to, we're going to travel to the past. It's Ooh, a time machine. Oh, let's do it. So, uh, they finished, they stopped for lunch at 1.20 p.m. So that's what I So I'm going to write 1.20 over here. If, if, yeah, so that's for going backwards in time. So I'm going to write it over here. And then up here, I'm just going to write one hour and 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. Just so I can keep that close and handy because we're going to start breaking this hour and 35 up into smaller chunks. And so each smaller chunk we're going to break it down into. I want to keep track of how much time left I have to account for. So right now, because I'm right at 120, I still have an hour and 35 minutes that I've got to go backwards in time with. So I'm just going to start right here with one hour. That one's real easy. I can yeah. jump back one hour piece of cake, and that was Mrs. Healy's <coughs> yeah, first Yeah, I can step. go. I can go back. So here. I'm just going to draw. I call them time hops. And I'm going to make it <laughs> bigger because it's one hour. And so on the top, I'm going to write one hour because I hopped back in time one hour. And then down here, I'm going to write the time. It's super, super important that every hop, you write how long you hopped mm -hmm. for, and then you write the new time on the bottom. If you do all the hops, but you're not following the time along the bottom or the time's on the top, you might, you might not quite be as, as accurate as you'd like to be. So if I hopped back from 120, back in time one full hour, then that would be Yeah, that's when I had 20. my 12. And that was her first my one. My 20, yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cross out that one hour. The reason I crossed out that one hour is because I've already accounted for it. Is I've, I've already gone back one whole hour, so I don't need to worry about that hour anymore. 
The next thing is I've got to go back 35 minutes. Okay, I have a small problem with 35 minutes is because if I go from 20 minus you know, 35, or I'm going back 35 minutes from 20, mm -hmm. can a 20 year old take care of a 35 year old? Can I take <laughs> 35 away from 20? I actually can't. So what I always, always, always recommend to students, your best friend is going to be once you've done the hours, the next thing is to jump to a whole hour with your minutes. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to do another hop. Well, actually, let's break it down even more than that. I can break that 35 minutes down into 10 minutes plus 10 minutes plus 10 minutes plus 5 minutes. That might make it a little bit easier for us to think about it as. So rather than jumping back 35 minutes all at once, I'm just going to jump back one set of 10 minutes. So I'm going to write... 10 up there, I put that colon there so we know it's in the minutes column. So I've jumped back 10 minutes, so I'm at 1210. And I'm gonna cross out that 10 minutes. I'm gonna jump back another 10 minutes, which 10 minutes before 1210 would be 12 o'clock. I'm gonna cross out that 10. Now I'm gonna hop back another 10 minutes, which would be 10 minutes before 12 o'clock, would be 1150. So I'm going to cross out that 10 minutes. And now the last thing I have to do is I have to just have to, have to hop back five minutes. So five minutes before 11.50 is 11.45. <laughs> so we, we got, got the same, same answer. answer. Now you can chunk some of these together. So for example, rather than going from 12.20, uh, hopping back just 10 at a time, you could go 12.20, you know, you could do minus 20 and go to 12 and then you would have 15 minutes left, and then go straight to 11.45. You can do some of the things like that, but... 15. Yeah, 15, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if you're stuck, break the minutes down into 10, 10, 10, and five. How many tens there are and how many fives? And then you can just cross them off as you go along. Okay, I like, Mr. Downs, I like this method because you're able to keep track of because when I did my method, I forgot, oh, yeah, but it can't be 1245, it has to be 11. This way, you're keeping track of when the hour yeah. hand moves. I like and, that. And, so, and then hopefully, you know, as students, and some of you might already be a little more comfortable with this, if you can jump, you can do bigger jumps over time as we sort of get used to it. Should we, do, yeah. should we go through another one? Sure. Okay. Sure. So Mrs. is going to sing a song real quick while I <laughs> change slides. They say that being like me is wonderful. It's wonderful. Uh, let's do, let's do so this one. they tell me that's just a silly song. I just made that up. Okay. All right. Evelyn, she has a dance class every Saturday. It lasts one hour and fifteen minutes and is over at twelve forty-five. At what time does Evelyn's dance class begin? So this is another one where we're going back in time because we know the dance class is over at twelve forty-five, and we know we're going back in time one hour and 15 minutes. Okay. So, Mrs. Hill, would you show us okay. your clock yes, light? I and I will do clock. the time pops. Okay, so I'm gonna read the problem again. I know that we're, it's over at 1245. So I'm gonna draw 1245 on my clock. So my hour hand is, it's, all, it's actually pretty close to one, but just for the, just for this, we'll just drag, draw 1245 right there. And then I've gotta go an hour and 15 minutes before that time. So since I know an hour before is so easy, I'm going to take this and I'm going to head all the way around. So that's going to adjust this one. So now it's going to be, so one hour would be 11.45. Okay, so now it's here and here. So the red is my hour before. And then, so then from an hour before... So that would be 11.45. I'm just going to draw it again. 11.45. Now I've got to go 15 minutes back in time. I like how you said that. So 15 minutes back in time, there's 5, 10, 15. So now that hour hand goes, or the minute hand, excuse me, goes to there. But my hour hand is still at 11. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, <laughs> thank you, Daddy. <laughs> Sorry. So then I think the answer is 11.30. Yes. Okay. So that's so my answer. 
let's check this with the time hops. So I'm going to start 1245. And I'm going back in time. Now, if we were going forward in time, I would jump this way. But I'm going back in time, so I'm going to jump to the left. And up here, I'm going to write, it was one hour and 15 minutes. So remember, that's how much time I need to account for. So I'm going to write one hour and 15 minutes, just so I can keep track of where I'm at in my time hops. So uh, you can start with whichever way you want. I always like to just do a big hop first, just to make me feel like I'm being accomplished. So <laughs> I'm going to jump back one whole hour. And if I jump back one whole hour from 1245, that's going to be 1145. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cross out that hour because I've already counted that. So all I have left is I need to count for 15 minutes. There's a couple different ways I could do it. I could jump all 15 minutes at once. I could jump 10 minutes, then five minutes. Uh, or I could jump five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. I'm gonna do the five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, um, just so we can see a little bit of what that looks like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to think of these 15 minutes, I'm gonna kind of uh, regroup them or break it down. I'm gonna cross out the 15, because I wanna think of it as five plus five plus five minutes. Yeah, kind of like and that's what Mrs. Yeah, yeah, she just did the jumps by five. So if I go back five minutes from 11.45, that's going to be 11.40. And these smaller time hops might be kind of hard to see. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to cross out that five because I've hopped back five minutes. I need to hop back five more minutes. Five minutes before 11.40 is 11.35. Cross out that five minutes because I've hopped back five more minutes. My last step, I only have five more minutes to account for, so I'm going to hop back five more minutes. Five minutes before 11.35 is 11.30. <laughs> so we did it. We did it. We got the same answer. Um, so that there is 12.89. That's the elapsed time, elapsed time lesson. Uh, we told you this would be the right take. That we, we yeah, we did. It. I we think did we did great. I'm a fan. Yeah. So. Good luck. If you are having any issues with Think Central or Go Math stuff online, just email me. And uh, any questions about math, I'm more than happy to answer as well. But good luck and okay. thanks for watching. And I'm still doing the morning messages. So get online and see those. Bye bye. See ya.